Welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today is day four of the Advent Calendar of Christmas Horror Movies as we count down to the 25th. And today is a very, very special treat. Before I made this, uh, started doing this Advent Calendar, I had all the movies lined up. I wanted to make sure that I actually had 25 more after last year of Christmas horror films, and I did. Uh, but... Unbeknownst to me, all of a sudden, I went to watch a film last night and just happened to click on Shutter. and what did I find but one of the best gifts I could ever possibly find under my tree, and that's that Dial Code Santa Claus was finally released. And if you've never heard of this movie, this is a French film that was made in 1989 or 1990, uh, depending on what source you're looking at. Uh, Shutter has it as 1990, uh, IMDb has it as 1989. It also goes under many different titles. Uh, Shutter has it as Dial Code Santa Claus, that's the most common one. Uh, but we also have uh, Deadly Games, Game Over, 3615 Code Pere Noel, or Hide and Freak. Regardless, this is a fantastic little film, and uh, previous to this release, it was really only available through underground uh, sources and bootleg copies, but it was recently restored and just released. So I went ahead and watched it, and man, what a wild ride this was. Now before I begin my review, I just want to kind of take a moment and pause and just say that if you have been liking my reviews and you've been liking my video and the content I've been putting out, I really cannot overstate that how much, for a small channel like mine especially, uh, that subscription and that like button will help out, especially the like button if you've already subscribed, uh, as well as leaving comments. I would love to hear them. I would love to engage with them. I would love to respond and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you ha if there's a channel out there with 2 million subscribers and each video gets 24 million views uh, and, you know, s hundreds of thousands of likes and so forth, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously everything, every little bit matters, but when you are uh, small potatoes like myself, it really, really helps, like way more than you know. Uh, so I would definitely encourage people to do that. And uh, product placement. And now on to the review. Now this will be spoiler free, but I will also be having an accompanying spoiler filled deep dive kind of review slash discussion uh, accompanying this video coming out the same day. So look for that if you want to have this movie discussed a bit further if you've already seen it or if you don't mind it being spoiled. Now, this film centers around the character of Thomas, who is an 11-year-old boy who is rocking one of the best mullets I've ever seen put to film, bar none. It's a work of art more than it is a hairstyle. And to match the gloriousness of his mullet is his imagination. He has a very vivid, wild imagination and apparently... Richie Rich style resources to boot. He lives in a house that's pretty much like a man-made uh, Hogwarts, uh, complete with trap doors and secret rooms and all sorts of uh, you know goodies and fun stuff. And Thomas makes good use of it by playing Rambo and chasing things around the house. And uh, he's basically just an 11-year-old boy with unlimited financial resources. And he, in his imagination, with uh, all his might, he also believes in Santa Claus. He has been hearing rumors from uh, peers and so forth that there is no Santa, that the parents buy the presents, but he just doesn't believe it. He doesn't want to believe it. He wants to believe in Santa Claus. And that comes back to haunt him a bit later as he is left alone on Christmas Eve with his grandfather. His mother has to go out working. And one thing that I loved about this movie is the some earlier scenes establish the family and establish how much love there is between everybody. And I thought that it felt very natural and it felt very uh, warm. But uh, in this case, he is alone uh, the night of Christmas Eve where a madman dressed as Santa basically comes down his chimney and starts raking havoc and chasing them around the house. And uh, it starts kind of a, a cat and mouse game of killer tendencies as Nicholas basically tries to fight the evil intruder from his home. And if that sounds in any way familiar... Uh, yes, this movie came out just before Home Alone, about a year before Home Alone, and it did encourage some litigious action on the part of these filmmakers towards Home Alone and its filmmakers. So, I never really read uh, the conclusion of that, how that wound up, but uh, regardless, it is a somewhat familiar uh, tone to it, but what I can say is by having the stakes so high elevated, and yes, there is a massive massive sense of whimsy 
and uh, and jovialness about this one. But there's also very elevated stakes as opposed to Home Alone. Home Alone really, uh, until the, towards the end, it really just kind of became... Uh, the most that was going to happen was that, you know, the wet bandits would go in and burglarize the house, uh, which, you know, would be, you know, intensely scary to a kid left home alone. Uh, but in this one, it establishes higher stakes than that with life or death situations uh, brought on fairly early on in the invasion. If you recall, and you know, I'm sure you've seen Home Alone, everybody's seen Home Alone, the ending uh, toward it where the wet bandits have him on the hook and they are smashed and beaten and bruised and all sorts of stuff and they have finally had enough and they are talking about all the violent things that they want to do to this kid burglary is no longer on the table it is now revenge and physical harm against this kid that was a very terrifying uh in its own right kind of few minutes before that situation got resolved and what i can say is that the tone and feel of that few minutes of tension is what is prevalent throughout the entirety of the invasion of dial code santa claus uh, <clears throat> as well as a massive sense of, uh, well, okay, let me put it this way. Somehow, in all of the craziness, secret room, trap doors, manic energy, and wily coyote antics in this film, it still manages to wind up being devastatingly heartbreaking in its own right. Uh, I mean, a lot of it, yes, is very cartoonish and very fanciful and uh, even going so far like in the Wile E. Coyote kind of analogy as to have a trap, uh, you know, kind of contained, you know, they'll, he'll set it, it'll be tripped, there'll be consequences, and then we'll just flip right now over to the next one as he sets it and so on. And almost, it seems like a kind of bubble isolated consequences as we just kind of move from one to the other towards, uh, so, you know, some portions of this film. Uh, but even regarding, you know, regardless of that rather, uh, yeah, the, the emotion behind it and you just had to really feel for Nicholas on several levels. First of all, yes, he is defending his life. Second of all, he did suffer a massive loss that I'm not going to get into spoilers on. Uh, but third, you know, he's trying to protect his family. He, he knows that his grandfather is in poor medical health. He knows that his mother is coming home and he has no way to contact her and warn her about the situation she'd be coming home to. There's a lot at stake. Also, the fact that he really believes in his heart of hearts that this is Santa Claus. And that's one thing that really killed me about this movie was how much I felt for Thomas on that regard. You know, he wanted to stay up. He wanted to watch Santa Claus to come down the chimney. He, for all intents and purposes, watched Santa Claus come down the chimney. And he thinks that because he stayed up late and he did spy on him, that all of this is his fault. And in defending himself, you know, how do you kill Santa Claus how you know as a child how do you resolve that in your head and you could see that they actually managed to pull that off on an emotional level and just just damn so I'm going to go and throw up all the scores here as always four different categories each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points and I really enjoyed this movie overall I thought the plot was fairly well written uh, it was very simple but also uh, just like I said full of whimsy full of childhood kind of uh, I don't, I don't, it, it was unlike anything I've ever really seen to have the house be of that kind of, uh, situation. When I first watched this and I watched Thomas play Rambo with his dog and there's an actual trap door that launches uh, with the dog landing and a net underneath, I really thought that he would look back and it would be a situation of like a cardboard box with a little flimsy net or something on, uh, that, you know, like the, the trap door was his imagination taking hold and we were just seeing the visual representation of it. And then we snap back to reality, but no, there's an actual trap door in the house, legit that he controls with a freaking thing on his arm. It's amazing. And, uh, I mean, the whimsy is there and it's well-written, uh, but that doesn't stop it from also having a good heart to the movie and that heart is what allows it to be broken so much uh so yeah i mean the plot I, I actually really liked how it was written there was a lot of cheesiness to it i'm not gonna lie if you watch this and you think you're gonna get a straight laced horror film buckle up because you're not it's there's a lot of whimsy and fun and uh yeah it, silliness honestly just silliness but uh i mean it's a wild ride and it's worth the it's worth the ticket uh, the intent, obviously, I thought that this pulled things off fairly well, as, but the acting I kind of want to point out. Now, the kid that played Thomas, Alain Lalonde, 
was it never really did anything after this. Uh, I mean, in terms of acting, uh, from from what I saw on his IMDb page, he's actually responsible for a lot of visual effects in an, uh, a fair number of major motion pictures, which is pretty cool. Good on you, but he never really. Uh, I I, I want to say I really liked his performance, and I'm not going to say that it's a shame he didn't wind up going to doing things. As far as child actors go, I really say that uh, that's really really. I mean, however their future pans out, as long as they're healthy and happy. Um, but uh, I also want to point out the character of Santa Claus. Basically, the unnamed madman was done very well, very menacing, very very kind of odd uh, by uh, Patrick Florsheim. Uh, did a very, very good job in terms of uh, just presenting a uh, happy but also brooding and also sinister kind of uh, character to the screen that uh, had questionable motives. And after after watching the film, I still question the motives, but I'm going to get into that in the spoiler-filled deep dive. And so with a grand total of 73 out of 100 points, this movie wound up being better than I thought it had any right to be in my opinion. Uh, for Certainly for a Christmas horror movie, I really didn't think that in the 2019, my second round of the advent calendar of Christmas horror films, uh, that I would wind up with a film that rated this high. And I'm very pleasantly surprised. I can't wait to continue on until the 25th here, but I'm so, so happy that Shudder released this film in time for the holidays. And I really just cannot recommend it enough. Yes, it's subtitled. It's foreign language. And yes, it has a silliness and a wackiness and just an absolute bonkers quality to it. But you know what? I, I really, I still say that it is a must watch. It is absolutely a must watch, especially around Christmas time and especially for horror movie lovers. So uh, I think really that should about do it. That should wrap up this spoiler free segment. Uh, keep an eye out for the spoiler filled deep dive coming up pretty soon here. Uh, for the movie 1990, 1989's Dial Code Santa Claus, Di- Deadly Games, Game Over, 3615, Code Pan and Noel, or Hide and Freak. However you want to say it, that's my review of it. Go watch it. So thank you very much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you like this video, again, please, please, please like and subscribe. If you want to support me further, my Patreon and my merchandise storefront links are below. And remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.